I'll read it to you very slowly so you will absorb it. It's called Let Peace Rule. Okay? When you belong to Christ, you should seek, again, you should seek godly things. That is if you belong to Christ. Now, if you're not seeking godly things, I will question the veracity of you belonging to Christ. Shouldn't be all about what you wear. Now, this came from God. Now, he didn't say the car you drive. Okay? Look at your neighbor and say, stay awake. This is better than your whatever, your toy, okay? So, uh, not about the car you drive. So, I'm not trying to hit on the young people who just got their cars. I'm not saying that, okay? But you already experienced how when you trust God, it will come. Uh, uh, who are you again? You have a name. Oh, yeah, Sabina. So, Sabina... I'm sure when she said it, you said, I want to read, whatever, okay? And she, I have a feeling that was how, that's exactly how you said it. Like, yeah, I just want to read the, and then all of a sudden, Sabina, can you imagine, it came to pass. Can you imagine? But that's how serious our God is with us. If you put him first, you get the rest. I'll say it again. You put God first, you get the rest. How's that for the deal? Okay? But if you put other things first, you're a fool. Simple as that. And I'm sure you don't want to be a fool. Anybody here would like to be a fool officially? See? Not one hand. So then stop acting like one. If you live a life committed to Christ, comma, peace will rule in your heart. Did you all hear me? There is no room for depression. There is no room for worries or fears or doubts or whatever. Again, I'll read that. If you live a life committed to Christ, peace will rule in your heart. And others will want to be around you. That's a sure sign. All of a sudden, you're the sweetest thing that ever happened on this planet. They're swarming around you. For the boys, including girls, okay? So, oh, nobody said, yeah, pastor. So, to be around you because you emulate Jesus. Again, you emulate Jesus. But don't let it get to your head because you are super attractive. Or you're super good looking. Don't even worry about your looks. Will you look at your neighbor and say, will you stop worrying about your looks? Tell them right now. Because <laughs> that's a complete gobbledygook in this life. Stop worrying about your looks. Look at your neighbor and say, you're already beautiful. Okay. Look at me, everyone. If you doubt that you're beautiful, shh, my turn. If you doubt that you're beautiful, you're trying to tell God he made something ugly. How dare you? You cannot even manufacture one eyelash. And you will judge what God has created wonderfully. You better emulate King David. He said, how you ooh, intricately made me. Wonderfully, he said. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not only gorgeous, you're wonderful. Tell them right now, officially, officially. And don't take it from anybody else. Don't take it from anybody else. Because until you know you're gorgeous, you, you would like to look for company. You remember, misery loves company. But if you're feeling gorgeous all the time, feeling wonderful all the time, all people around you would feel it. And they want uh, to be infected by that spirit. And say, come on, suck it to me. You know, like, give it to me. <laughs> Who's laughing? <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Actually, that's a good time to laugh, okay? So let me just say this to you in, in moving. That, that's all I could read for you. There's a long, long thing. Here. I'll continue next week because that's all you could take right now, okay? So who are you again? 
gorgeous. Okay. Who are you again? Gorgeous. What else? Wonderful. What else? Beautiful. I am. Okay. Now we're going to. And then uh, maybe you can add, Matt, tell everyone. They're intelligent. Tell them. You have the mind of Christ. You're super clever. Can I, kids, listen to me? I will not lie to you. Many times when we were starting here before, there were so many children with, with Ds. And I remember some of the kids have Fs even. We started asking them to think as they speak that they are A students. And in no time, they were A students. Now, here's my challenge to you. Beat that. Okay? Look at your neighbor and say, Whoa! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, okay, came this, comes the serious part now. I was just warming up. There's one book that I would like to present to you. And it's not commonly focused on. It's not so popular. But I want you to know it's a very special book. Because this man has a very interesting background. His name was Amos. Okay? And who is Amos exactly? His name actually means burden. He's carrying the burden. Or a burden better. That was Amos's name. And Amos was chosen, handpicked by God to become his nation's prophet, prophet of Israel. But he was rare. He didn't come from a very wealthy family. And if you'd like to listen, this is who he is, okay? Apparently, Amos made his livelihood by herding sheep. Sounds almost like King David, huh? Who was a shepherd and turned into a king. It's like a farmer who suddenly becomes the president of the United States. This is the beauty of God entering your life. This is the beauty of God becoming the driver in your life. Full in full control, not the word is not control, full charge of the steering wheel of your life. And he's also cultivating wild figs or caring for sycamore trees while living in the Judean city of Tekoa, southeast of Bethlehem. Called to be a spokesman for God. I made that clear already. God's mouthpiece. Do you know why I could almost associate to this one? When you become God's mouthpiece, you don't necessarily enjoy what you're saying. Because you are asked not to qualify it. You are asked to deliver it. Okay? Remember the saying, don't shoot the mailman? Okay? Or the messenger? Sorry, the mailman. I think the, that's the modern messenger, isn't it? The mailman. <laughs> but please, I beg of you, don't shoot your mailman, okay? <laughs> just, just, because, just because you got bills that you don't, that is not necessarily your favorite, or bad news, doesn't give you the right to kill the mailman. He's just delivering it. Hello? Okay? So look at your neighbor and say, have mercy on your pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, suffice to say, he was called to be a spokesman for God, God's mouthpiece. Amos delivered his messages in the cities of north, northern kingdom, Samaria, comma, Bethel, comma, Gilgal, and others in the 8th century B.C. How many are so aware of your history? 
world history and you know how to count. Okay? So the messages of Amos reflect the era of unprecedented economic and political prosperity in the northern kingdom of Israel. Guys, what I'm saying to you today specifically is this reminds me of California. This is why it is our topic. And this message is specifically addressed to the churches of California. Not since the days of Solomon had times been so good. They were prosperous. They're not poor. I'd like you to know. Do you know how many millionaires and billionaires we have in California alone? More than many other states of America. At one point, California is the fifth largest, it still is, I think, fifth largest economy in the whole world, not the United States, in the whole world. So we're talking about the right place here, aren't we? This was the era of uh, Amos. Amos denounces the people severely for neglecting God's word. Pay attention. For social injustice, pleasure seeking, familiar? Self indulgence, familiar again? And gross idolatry. Idolatry, look at me, everyone. Idolatry is a worship of something other than God. Is it money? Is it your hair? Is it your jewelry? Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your kids? Is it your pocketbook? What is it? Is it your job? Is it your life? Because if you worship those things, meaning to say you care more about those things than you care more about God, then they're your idols. Is that clear? IFGC. Isn't it clear? Hallelujah. Shall we move along? Yeah. Moving along. Israel's accountability is greater than that of surrounding nations because she has had greater privileges. God's judgment is sure to come. You've been hearing that too many times. Now, understand me. When you hear the word judgment, that means there's something we have been disobeying and we're making God so unhappy about and we're turning a blind eye and deaf ears to what God is saying. Remember the attitude of, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, another time. At the drop of the hat, when there's a birthday party and it's competing against your time with the church, which one do you choose? You're the only one that could answer that question. In a series of five visions, Amos portrays the imminence of the day of doom, warning his people that they ought to prepare to meet God. They ought to prepare to meet God. God. For the God-fearing people, however, Amos has a word of hope and assurance. Did you all hear me? For those who are God-fearing, hearing this message I'm about to give to you, this is a message of hope and assurance. Can you imagine right now, when you're having so much, uh, wow, I'm, 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 nearly, I'm nearly out for words. I'm, I'm out of words. You know when you have this flaming love affair with the world, you're so in love with life more than God. Hallelujah. It's not God. Because you know why? That's worshiping the creation more than the creator. What 
are you a fool that you would do that? You're more clever than that. How many are parents here? Raise your hands. Can you imagine if your children are only in love with what you're going to give to them and not in love with you? Are you all listening? Don't deny it. It hurts. So you think God th feels differently? How many times did God say, seek ye first the kingdom of God? How many times did God say, love the Lord your God with all, not with some, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength? What is it in any of those things he said that we didn't understand? And yet, why are we doing it? It's a question, isn't it? And we're talking about Christians here. I'm not talking, hey, the non-believers, they're not guilty of this. We are guilty of this. Because we're supposed to be more, if you like, informed, knowledgeable and related to God, and they are not. Theirs is a legitimate excuse. Ours is a very, very lame and poor excuse. I love it when you're quiet. No, I'm serious. Because that means it's working. Isn't it? I love the way Neva said, when Pastor Bobby will give the word, when you go home, Search it more. That's how it should be. Look at your neighbor and say, keep digging. Keep digging, baby. Baby, baby. Make it really, really always a constant practice. Okay, I'm, I'm about to finish this bit here. Uh, for the God-fearing people, however, Amos has a word of hope and assurance. The day is coming when the kingdom of David will be reestablished and God's people will dwell in safely. Or safety, should I say. Living in the houses they have built and enjoying the fruit of their vineyards which they have planted. Look at me. Sometimes we think that God is a killjoy. He's not interested in all the things I'm happy about. <laughs> How many are as childish as that? But you don't want to admit it. In fact, when you hear this kind of message I give, you begin to hate me too. But you see, the problem is you cannot continue hating me because I'm lovely. Okay? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, the pastor is lovable. Tell them right now. <laughs> pastor is lovable. He, I'm, I'm, I'm that pastor's favorite. <laughs> okay, let's go to the message now. Okay? Because I want you to read Amos. Yeah. Did you get that? I, I know it wasn't so clear. Uh, you can use the Amplified Version. Amos chapter 4, verses 4 to 12. I just want us to meditate on that first. I'm not rushing to, to finish this uh, message. If anything, what I'm rushing about is for you to meditate and focus and absorb. Because I want you to be able to teach this to people. Look at, look at me right now. I want you to be a teacher. Able to handle the word of God. Not hearing one ear out the other. How useless is that? That's not being wise if you do it that way. If you don't want to forget the word of God, practice it. Yeah? Okay. Here's my question. Especially for detail. Okay? Here's my question to you, Nitel. I told you, you better pay attention, okay? So, Nitel, what's going to happen to you if you stop eating your food three times a day? Okay. Okay, if Nitel, ladies and gentlemen, is starving, what do you think Nitel will turn out to be? I'm giving you hints. <laughs> I just said it. What did I say? <laughs> You're going to be skinny, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Look at your neighbor. What about you? Here? What else? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anorexic. 
And the Lord said to me, there are many of my people that are anorexic. Not a good idea. So, did you get it, Christina? Um, let me drink my drink, okay? Cheers, everyone, okay? I filled it with pomegranate and then I uh, liquidized it and now I could feel all the seeds, okay? So what Amos, Christina, if you can't find it, I'm going to move on to the next thing, okay? So who has found it in your Bible? You did? Oh, it's right there? Okay. Thank you, Christina. Now, because of this, and what is that, guys? Coming judgment. Will be the land not quake, it says, and everyone mourn who dwells in it. Indeed, of all, it shall rise up like the Nile, and it will be tossed around from the impact of judgment and afterwards subside again like denial of Egypt. It shall come about in that day, says the Lord, that I shall cause the sun to go down at noon, and I shall darken the earth in broad daylight. Um, that's everything, Christina? Oh, just, just a ten. Okay, uh, continuing. And I shall turn your festivals and feasts into mourning. And all your songs into dirges, funeral poems to be sung. And I shall cause a sackcloth to be put on everyone's loins and baldness on every head, shaved for mourning. And I shall make that time like a time of mourning for an only son who has died. And the end of it shall be like a bitter day. Behold. Look at your neighbor and say, behold. You know when God says, behold, you better behold. Keep an eye. Watch this. This is what he's saying. You know, it's funny though. No matter how gloomy and doom, doomy looking and sounding, the whole thing is... For the non-believers, they're shaking in their boots. For the Christians, they're rejoicing. Amen. And did you all hear me? <laughs> Hallelujah. You should be rejoicing because this is going to come. This is God's preparation for you. And what I'm about to announce to you is no longer the move of Satan, but the move of God. It needs to happen. Otherwise, how can we genuinely say to God, Oh, Maranatha, come Jesus, come. He can't come. Unless there's a very good reason for him to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to collect his bride, the church. And that is not an ordinary church. You and I better be without spot or wrinkle. Or else you'll be left behind. Says the Lord. When I will send hunger over the land. Not hunger for bread or thirst for water. But rather hunger for hearing the words of the Lord. You know. Some of the things that I'm going to point out to you later on. Not now. Would be. The disintegration. Of the holiness of the United States of America. We are doing it. Removing the word of God. In public places. In monuments. In other things. 
We want to face it out. We want to change it with something. We want this nation to be a neutral nation. Says who? Look at your neighbor and say, the fools, the real fools are saying that. And I want you to know that even if you are responsible and you hear me, you better know that you're a fool for canceling God's word. Do you know why I know? Because the word says, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. Tell me you're not 100% fool. from the north even to the east they will roam here and there to seek the word of the Lord longing for it as for essential life unfortunately they will not find it so what did I say earlier on there will be starvation and that's what God was saying to me Bobby they're starving the world is starving right now. They're anorexic. And they even think they're great. Bulimic, anorexic, nick, nick, nick. That's what's happening. Believe it or not, it's time. But I want you to have a foretaste of what we are going to tackle. And God is going to prepare you and I for his return. You are going to be needed by God. Either to warn the world, the non-believing world, or to remind the Christians that are sleeping. Thinking that God is not coming back. Don't ever forget, I'll give you a perfect example. The parable of the ten virgins. Who were the virgins? They were the ones that are going to be married to the, to the bridegroom. Because the bridegroom was coming at any time. The five of them were wise. And the other five were fools. So, of course, will the bridegroom lie? He came back. And when he came back, the five foolish ones panicked. Give us some of your oil. He said, no, no, we just have enough to last us. And they were sleeping. You know the meaning of that? They were so soaked. They were so saturated in the world. Full of all the gadgets of the world. But not of God. Whereas those who are being led by the Spirit. Shall live by the Spirit. And those who are not. Are living by their flesh. And the end of which is what? Look at your neighbor and say. Destruction. That's all. Don't worry about it. That's all. Okay. That's all. And I end this message. I don't want anybody in this room. I don't want anybody in this room to think that God would like to punish you. I want everyone in this room to think that God is promoting you. And you're not going to be part of this stupid crowd who allow themselves to be deluded by the world, saturated by the flooded by the things of the world. That they are empty of God. And yet they happen to be Christians. <laughs> so much for being Christians. If you are not a God pleaser. You are a God displeaser. 